Okay, guys, we really ought to get started on our presentation. I've started our first slide. I'll bet a lot of people don't realize that sneakers are a $42 billion a year business. That's bigger than the economy of some countries. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so I think we should present the sneaker market as a great example of supply and demand. Yes, exactly. It is also a classic example of market controlled by a single company. Nike controls more than 60% of the U.S. sneaker market. They are completely dominant. But the interesting part of the market is at the high end, the most expensive shoes. I think that should be our focus. Nike releases just a small number of these high-end shoe styles every week or so. Sneakerheads, yeah, that's what they call serious sneaker collectors, are willing to stand in line for hours, even days, to buy them. Since the company limits supply, demand is really strong. It would be a good idea to point out that this is only part of the picture. There are really two separate markets for sneakers. This is the primary market, that is, the first time the shoes are sold, from the company to an individual. Let's talk about the secondary market, too. Nike is even more dominant there. More like 95% of these high-end shoes on the secondary market are Nikes. Right, but I suggest we first explain what the secondary market is. We could say something like, The primary market is when a customer buys a pair of shoes in a store, but some sneakerheads don't like standing in line, so they buy their shoes in the secondary market mainly from the hundreds of internet sneaker sites. The secondary market is mostly sneakerheads selling to other sneakerheads. But they have to pay more, sometimes three to four times more than the store price. People can make a lot of money on the secondary market. It's a $1.2 billion business, and average profit margins are about 30%. I saw a pair of Air Jordans for sale online for almost $1,100. Most of the really expensive ones are connected to celebrities like hip-hop artists or athletes. That's nothing. Some others cost a lot more. Let's show a picture of an expensive pair. And what about a profile of a famous sneakerhead? One guy has more than 3,000 pairs, and his collection is worth $750,000. Wow! I read that some sneakerheads have portfolios of their shoes. We should mention that. They have what? You know, if you buy stocks or even have a bank account, you get a statement that tells you the value of what you own, the value of your portfolio. It's the same thing, just sneakers instead of stocks. That's a great detail. This information demonstrates that sneakers are a serious business, even if not many people know about it. But let's not forget... This isn't just about buying and selling sneakers. I found this quote from a movie called Sneakerheads. There are a handful of things that can define who you are without saying a word. And your shoes are one of them. Excellent! That movie also shows that knowledge of sneakerheads is becoming more widespread. Okay, I think we have a good plan. We should put the quote at the end. How about meeting around 9.15 or 9.30 at my place to finish up? Sounds, Sounds good. good.